Hello explorers and welcome to this week's episode. Yeah, this is going to be the first episode of our new Mozambique road trip. I know you guys have seen many videos on the channel about Mozambique, but we're going to places we have never been to before. And welcome to the new and improved two tickets to anywhere. If you missed the changes and what happened, you can click on the pop-up banner in the top right hand corner. So in this episode, we're going to show you in detail how to cross the Labombe border. I see lots of people are asking, what do you need? Where do you need to go? So we're going to show you in detail how to do that. And then later in this video, we're going to show you our accommodation. That place is absolutely a gem. So stay tuned so you don't miss it. So guys, after you cross the Kumati River, you will see about 1.52 kilometers further, there's a BP on the left-hand side. We normally stop here and fuel up. If you're a Drive Mars member, you get a discount on fuel here. More on how to join Drive Mars a bit later. So we're gonna fill up and then cross the border. As you guys can see on the clip in the top right corner, on a previous trip there were a lot of trucks on the road from the BP to the border. Sometimes they can get out of hand so just follow the flow of traffic around them. Usually if this happens, the local police force is there to guide the people to pass the trucks to get to the border. Okay guys, so we just filled up at BP at Komati Port, so now we're almost here at the border. So we'll explain to you how everything works as we go. Okay guys, so when you cross in on the South African side, you'll see most of the time the police is pretty relaxed, they just sit there. So now we're gonna stop here at our side of the border, the South African side, so we can get our passport stamped. And then we'll show you where the more interesting stuff happens on the Mozambique side. The South African side is normally pretty easy on the in, sometimes the out can be very hectic. So I'll explain about timing a bit later, but yeah, we are here on the South African side now. So let's show you where to enter to get this done. On the South African side, when your passport is stamped, always check that the date is correct. If it's not, ask them to correct it. Okay guys, so when you get stamped on a South African side, yes, unfortunately South Africa is not always the greatest. People are not always very friendly and not always very helpful. But yeah, we pass through that side. So when you get to the Mozambique side, as you can see on screen here, right underneath this big red sign, they will stop you and give you a gate pass. You must keep that in your car and hold on to it because you're gonna have to hand it back in again. Good morning. Morning, how are you? Fine, you have any here? Two. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay. Yeah. Gate pass acquired. So now you carry on and I'm probably gonna check your passports here. So now you're on the Mozambique side. Morning. 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 How are you? Cool and you. Good, Good thank, thank you. you. Passport. Passport. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hey guys, then you just continue on, and then we'll show you at this building here in front where you can get parking. Then you need to go through the Mozambique side. This is the side where you will need all your paperwork if you are tra traveling with your own vehicle. But 
I'll explain all the documents a bit later. But yeah, as you guys can see, here, there is at least some parking here. The building here on the right is where you want to enter. So we're going to stop here, enter the building and get all this paperwork done. On the Mozambique side of the border, you enter and go through the guardrails and get your passport stamped. Check that the date is correct. Then as you exit the railing, you will see in front of you a different counter with a mesh metal counter guard on top of it. This is where the driver needs to show the natives of the vehicle to get the tip. And no, you don't have to tip to people because they are friendly. Tip stands for Temporary Import Permit for the vehicle and trailer. They will also ask you for your third party insurance, but I will explain that in just a bit. Very important, when you bring quad bikes or jet skis on the trailer, ensure that you have your own pen because you need to fill in the make, model and VIN number of each of them by hand on the temporary import permit before you drive on. When you get to this last boom gate, they will check your passports and they might do a quick inspection of the bucky and this is also the place where they will take your gate pass. Okay guys, so we finally made it into Mozambique. Just a big thing you must remember. If you guys pass through the border at the last checkpoint, do not stop. Like this person that wants to stop me in the road here with a reflective vest, you do not stop for them because they act like they are of the authorities, but they are not and then they want to check your money and then they bribe people out of money. Yeah, so please remember if you pass through the gate there where the guy checked our a pass through slip, you do not stop again. Anywhere in this section after the border, you do not stop. So yeah, don't buy SIM cards or anything here. Like I said, at this section now, I'll go to you to explain all the documents you need and where you can buy SIM cards ahead of time. So let's jump to that. Okay guys, let's start off with what you need in the vehicle. You need two triangle reflectors, but it has to be the solid body ones as the foldable ones are not accepted. This is for in case of a breakdown next to the road, one for in front of the vehicle and one for behind it. If you do break down and need to get out and work on your vehicle or change a tire, you need to wear a neon yellow green reflective jacket. You must have one for every person in the vehicle, but I always take five as my vehicle is licensed to carry five people. You never know when someone needs to drive with you. You also need a fire extinguisher but at least one kg that is full and valid and all of the items listed now must be in your vehicle at all times. Then, let's go to the outside of the vehicle. On the back of your vehicle, you need a sticker that shows the country of registration of the vehicle. In our case, it's a ZA sticker. If you are towing a trailer, the vehicle must have the yellow and blue triangle stickers on the front right of the vehicle, more than 150 millimeters away from the number plate. These stickers usually come in a pack of two with one big and one small. The big one must be on the right rear of the trailer. The trailer also needs a country of registration sticker, in our case, the ZA sticker. This is just to show oncoming traffic that you are towing a trailer. The documentation you need to cross the border is as follows. Certified copies of your passport, ID and driver's license. I know this sounds excessive, but you never know if you lose any of these documents, at least you have legal copies to show who you are. If you lose any of them, go to the nearest police station just to report it so you are covered for not having the original. And then, you need a letter from your local insurance that you can cross the border. A copy of the vehicle and trailer notice is needed. If your vehicle is still financed, you need to phone the relevant bank and get a letter to say you can take this vehicle out of the country and they will send you a copy of the notice. And then, very very important, you need to get Mozambique third party insurance. This is mandatory as your local insurance doesn't cover that in Mozambique. I always get mine from Holland Insurance Mozambique. You can get it online, they mail it to you. A vehicle is 280 Rand and a trailer is 140 Rand. A link to their website will be in the description box below. If your medical aid covers you when traveling internationally, it might be a good idea to inform them of your travel dates. I mentioned earlier in this video that I will explain the benefits of DriveMoss. So let's start off with where you need to put the stickers if you do decide to join. The big one with the number goes anywhere on the back of your vehicle and the small one you can stick on the driver's side mirror. I firmly believe this makes a big difference when it comes to local authorities as I know when you are a member you have access on how everything is supposed to work in Mozambique and they won't be able to easily fool you into thinking you are wrong and need to pay a fine. For instance, on this trip we passed through at least 20 checkpoints along the way and we were only pulled over twice and each time they checked our passports 
and on the one stop they just wanted to see what's in the back of the bucky and we were on our way within 5 minutes. In the 5 trips I have done to Mozambique in the last 5 years, I never had to bribe anyone and never got a fine. Just stick to the speed limit and when you get pulled over, remove your sunglasses to show respect and greet them with good and friendly vibes. If you are rude to them, they will return the attitude. So, now you are asking, how do I join Drive Moss? It is very easy. You just go on the website and you will see all the places where you can buy stickers from to join or you can order them online and have it delivered. To join is just a once-off fee, it's not a subscription, it's so easy and affordable. And when you become a member you have access to so much more info of Mozambique. On their website under the online tab you can buy SIM cards and data so you don't get stuck without any communication in a different country. DriveMoz also gives you access to the Zello communication app that you can use if you are in any kind of trouble. If you feel like this is not for you, join the Facebook page where you can ask questions and get info on everything relating to traveling to or in Mozambique. Can I just add, I don't think a lot of people know this, but when you are on the Facebook group, you can use the search option to see if there was anyone else asking the same question you have. For instance, can I take red meat over the border? And you just search red meat and everything related to that will pop up and you can go through all the information. If you are looking for accommodation ideas, join the Drive More Stay group. Here you can see what is available or you can ask what is available in the area you are traveling to. And people will respond with information and links to places. I really hope all this information helps you on your next trip to Mozambique. Okay guys, this is just a quick overview on how to exit the border coming from Mozambique to South Africa. Once again on this section before the border, you don't stop to buy anything. When you get to the first boom, they might stop you to check your passport, but we just went straight through. Then, find a parking spot and enter the building on the opposite side from when you entered as shown on screen. On the Mozambique side, they will just stamp your passport. Again, check that the date is correct. You then continue on to the South African side. Underneath the big sign where you received your gate pass, they will stop you and you need to hand over your tip or your temporary import permit. Then drive on and find parking on the South African side. You must enter to get your passport stamped as shown on screen. Again, make sure that the date is correct. Yes, 90% of the time there will be a queue as the South African side is not that sufficient, so do your planning well. Like I said earlier in the video, planning on the best time to cross the border to avoid long queues is very important. We have found that the following works well for us. Crossing into Mozambique on a weekday in the morning before 9 o'clock has always been fast. We normally try and do it this way. Weekends can sometimes get very busy. We normally exit on a Sunday, but then you have to be at the border by 8 o'clock in the morning, as the locals from Mozambique usually go to South Africa on weekends for shopping, and they return late in the afternoon. So make sure you sleep over close enough to the border as driving at night is not advised. This is very important. You do not want to break down in the night or eat a free roaming animal in the dark. If possible, rather cross the border in and out on weekdays. I have seen posts on drive miles of people coming later in the day on weekends and they stand in queues for 2-3 to three hours to exit. So, the plan was to show you accommodation in this video. But after ensuring I gave you all the information I could think of to cross the border, we decided to make that a separate episode. If there is anything I might have missed, please comment below so that we can help everyone to make their next trip to Mozambique the best one yet. If you like our content, please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next episode. Remember guys, when you stop dreaming, you stop living.